Good morning, everyone. So uh, for those of us who are on watching this from the Chrysalis page, you are not new to the live that I've been uh, conducting or running. So uh, those of us who are watching from the Happiness Project page, this is the first time that we are running a live session on the Happiness Project. So what is the occasion for this live? Right, I think we kind of shared a little bit about uh, this uh, ongoing kind of like an immersion program that uh, we are a part of uh, in, in what's happening. So good morning, Carissa. Thanks for joining us this morning. Um, yeah, so, so basically Chrysalis, which is the company that I kind of run, uh, has collaborated with this other company called Skilio. Uh, and Skilio basically has started this program called uh, the Skilio Industry Immersion Program, SIIP for short. So the Skilio Industry Immersion Program basically provides a platform for students who were supposed to go for their overseas uh, immersion program uh, for this, I think, this three months, uh, this summer holidays, but are unable to uh, go for this immersion program overseas because of COVID-19. And Skilio basically started this uh, program because uh, they wanted to just support this group of students who are now kind of caught in limbo, right? Because they can't go for their overseas immersion program. And then what's next for them? How can they still experience some form of industries that they might be interested in, learn some skills, uh, be able to uh, kind of like get in touch with industry or in corporate or whatever that they are interested in and be able to uh, learn some of the soft skills that they would probably learn when they go for their overseas immersion program. So when Skilio started this uh, SIIP, uh, they decided that they needed supporters or they needed contributors and collaborators to work with and they reached out to many different organizations and we were, we as in Chrysalis were one of them that kind of like jumped on uh, to say that, hey, let, let us uh, be a part of this program because it's really meaningful uh, and really supportive of the youth uh, in, in our country. And, you know, let's all get through this COVID-19 situation together. Uh, and because of the immersion program, then the question is what kind of uh, challenges or what kind of uh, projects can we allow these youth to work on? So uh, for Chrysalis, we actually have another Facebook page called The Happiness Project. And The Happiness Project was really derived from the, the fact that quite a number of years ago, I was searching for happiness and I was asking myself, what does happiness mean to me? Uh, and basically, I was going through a difficult period and this concept of happiness basically was a bit elusive and for me to actually want to discover more about it. And uh, in that process of the discovery, I, I learned quite a bit. But at the same time, uh, I also asked myself, I might not be the only one who are, who's asking this question of what happiness is and how can I potentially achieve happiness if it's ever achievable. Uh, and perhaps other people are also asking this question. And therefore, I set up the, the Facebook page, The Happiness Project, to actually um, support myself as well as support other people who are keen to identify what happiness is. Uh, so when we jumped on board the SIIP together with Skilio, um, what project could I then uh, uh, provide for this group of youth to be able to embark on? And the happiness project came to mind. Um, so the, the motivation of having these youth to come on board is really to be able to perhaps really hear from the ground, hear from the people, what happiness might mean to them and perhaps be able to identify uh, as Singapore, what are our definitions? I think a couple of years back, there has already been a research that went on before to talk about the happiness index of Singapore and then what uh, Singaporeans might be experiencing in terms of their happiness levels and so on and so forth. And I guess that particular project was driven a lot by the government. Uh, it wasn't so much a ground up initiative of sorts. So uh, having partnered with SIIP, really we thought that perhaps this could be a good platform for us to see it from a ground-up perspective uh, where we are not sponsored or motivated by anyone else but really just our own curiosity and our own interest to identify for ourselves and our own knowledge about what happiness means and perhaps what we can do to uh, achieve happiness or to uh, well be happy right in general. So we have our first cohort of uh, immersion students uh, and I'm going to bring them on shortly because really the work is done by them, 
right? All my all I needed to do was to just guide them along. The heavy lifting, the interviews, and everything that they've been doing are all done by them. Uh, so I give them a lot of credit for for how they've come along so far in this one month. They've been with us for about a month, and next week they will be handing this project over to another group of students who will continue the project, and then we will be continuing to update uh, whoever that's keen to find out uh, about the data that they managed to come up with uh, along the way. So uh, if I am not wrong, we will have three cohorts going through the SIIP with us. Uh, so this is the first cohort. I'm going to bring them online. So you stop hearing from me, you hear from them directly uh, and, and really hear their experience in being a part of this project and what they might have learned uh, from the findings as well as from their own development. So first off, I'm going to invite uh, a lovely lady by the name of Shiti. So hello, Shiti. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hello, Michelle. Hello, everyone. Yeah. Hello, so, I'm Shiti. Yeah. So Shiti can introduce a little bit more about herself, like what she's doing now, what she's going to do later and stuff like that. Okay, uh, so currently I'm actually, uh, I just finished my A-levels last year and I'm waiting to go into uni uh, later this August, later this year in August, um, studying at NUS, Philosophy, Politics and Econs. So um, th during this period of time, I wanted to just uh, to just uh, try something new and do something different and meaningful during this period. And that's one of the reasons why I decided to join this uh, program. And um, I think... During this break, I'm also currently doing a bit of community projects here and there for the elderly. And also joining this uh, project is also something um, I wanted to do because it was a meaningful topic and something that, like what Michelle has said, is like something everyone is kind of on search for and if not trying to be happy. So I kind of wanted to understand what people's views about it and to research deeper about this concept. Thank you, Shishi. And with her, she has a teammate by the name of Keda. So welcome, Keda. Would like to share a little bit about yourself. Hello. Hi, um, my name is Kada, and I am currently studying psychology at NTU. I'm entering my second year this coming August. Um, apart from that, I am a huge fan of cats. Uh, normally, yeah, brown. But it's not <laughs> volunteer, mostly for the youth and mental health related projects. I'm interested to join. Uh, that is because like, I wanted to be productive during the holidays. Uh, that is the one first very important reason for me. And the second is that I wanted to meet and learn from different people of diverse backgrounds. I think I have been rather within my comfort zone of uh, not going out to find out from how other people think and how their views might be different from mine. So when I saw what Skillio had put up, I thought it was something that could be an interesting time to spend my holidays. Yeah. Oh, thank you. And we have a few friends who are saying hi. Uh, we have Ying Ji. Is Ying Ji anyone's friend who's saying hi? <laughs> uh, thank Ying Ji for joining us. Hello. Uh, yeah, so we have one more team member because with the three of them, they become the awesome threesome. Uh, okay, so uh, <laughs> we have Yan Ling who is our last member of the team, but not least member, their contributions are equal. Uh, so, Yanling, perhaps you can introduce a little bit about yourself. So, hi, Michelle. Hi, everyone. Um, so, my name is Yanling. I'm 22 this year. I am currently not studying, um, uh, but in, in a way, I'm exploring this platform, uh, Skillio, as well as working on this project. One of it was to, get, was to gain experience. Another one of it was also to fill up my time in this circuit breaker period because um, work has been very slow lately because of this uh, transition. So um, I decided to do something uh, more meaningful, more worth my time as well. And that's why I decided to, to join. <laughs> 
for the experience sake and also to also to uh, fine tune my skills on empathy, active listening, asking good questions as well as I have interest in this area. Yeah. Nice. Cool. So thank you all three of you for coming in for this live session to share a little bit more about your experience as well as the findings uh, of the project. So perhaps we jump straight in, right? We jump, I'm going to jump straight into the findings of the project. Uh, and was there anything interesting that came up for you while you were doing while you were like interacting and finding out uh, stuff from the different respondents? So perhaps uh, I think you have prepared a PowerPoint slide or something like that to share your findings. Hold on. Sure. Okay. All right. Cool. So yes, Michelle, we have prepared our findings for our project. So what we have realized from our, our research is that the perceived level of happiness among Singaporeans is an average of 4.19 out of 7. So is that is a uh, near neutral. So on a scale of 1 to 7, where 1 is extremely unhappy and 4 is neutral, 7 is extremely happy, 4.19 is a slight neutral with a slight bias towards the happy side. And we throw all the response, almost a lot of response that we found that uh, Singaporeans are generally a bit more happy because of the basic needs being met. They have the healthcare, they have food on the table, they have education, basic education, they have a safe environment to live in. So I can't really complain much about that. But the second reason that was um, very widely raised is also cause of stress without um, due to our uh, kiasunas or was it uh, because of our competitive culture, how people are trying to compare one another and to really a lot of stress uh, as a result of that. And people trying to be good all the time, thinking that it's not enough or because of the very fast pace and hectic lifestyles, everyone's busy, whether it's students um, studying or whether it, it is um, adults going to a five out of five to out of seven days they go to work like five days and it's becoming a very routine and this all have resulted in a stress for themselves and also cause Singapore standard of living have been really really high so this caused people to be very worried about the monetary part how are they going to make ends meet so a lot of stress regarding um, the studies the work all the parts and our lifestyle and the last uh reason that was commonly brought out was how Singaporeans are not content. So they think that it's not enough. Whatever they have is not enough and they always want more. And it's a result of them not being able to feel truly fulfilled and happy. Now I'll pass on to Yen Ling who's going to talk about what happiness means. Caution. Yes, so um for a lot of the majority of the respondents that we got was that um, happiness means being appreciative. Happiness means having gratitude. Happiness means spending quality time with our loved ones and having independence, self-sufficiency, self-satisfaction, having purpose, having meaning, uh, being able to contribute to society in a way that is very uh, meaningful as well as part of something that they enjoy. So majority of the younger respondents uh, mentioned this as well. And throughout all our response, respondents, majority also mentioned spending a lot of quality time with our family, with our friends, even simply just hanging out with them is happiness for a lot of us. As well as uh, there are a few res interesting respondents that I'm going to share now that I, I felt was uh, very interesting to know. Uh, one of them actually mentioned, we think we know what we want, but don't know what we truly need. What is long lasting comes from within. So a few of them also did mention how uh, a sense of peace, a sense of calm, a sense of tranquility and serenity is what gives them happiness as well. So to move on to self-evaluation of happiness, should see. Okay, thank you, Yen Ling. So this quest for this part, we actually asked our, res our respondents what uh, makes them uh, what makes them happy. And so and when we asked them to rate on a scale of one to seven on how, pe how happy would they say they are. And these are the reasons why they decide to give on inside. So we have the positive side. So the things that make them happy and then 
the negative side is what makes them less happy. So from the first age group of 13 to 18, which is the youth, we found that uh, if you take the mean, so taking uh, all, their, all the their average uh, scale of ha how happy they are is around 1.5.21 over all the youth that we have uh, interviewed. The mode would be the number that kids appearing throughout the respondents. So let's say uh, most of them include uh, actually indicated a six among the youth. So we found that from 13 to 18, a lot of things that they said what made them happy is because they're generally a very positive and optimistic person. They like to do the things that they like or want to do. But uh, what makes them less happy, like bring down the happiness level is how they have worries about the school, about exams, and how because um, CB ended and they're returning back to school. For the 19 to 25 range, it's basically the range where people are actually heading towards university and also some, maybe a few, some are trying to, looking for jobs already. So we have, actually this group is the group that we saw a lowest number of uh, uh, how happy, the level of happiness they are at with a mean of 4.71, the average, and the, high, the most uh, chosen uh, scale is five among all the uh, young adults chosen within this range. So what makes them happy is um, they can be quite positive and optimistic at times when faced with hardships, they choose to look at things on the bright side. So this is what a lot of them actually say that makes them happy. But what brings them down is because they have yet to achieve a lot of things that they want to do, or they feel that they could have still do more things in the future and they haven't yet achieved. So a lot about future goals being not uh, fulfilled and things that can be they can be doing better. So for the next range would be the 26 to 40 range, which is the adults range, where they are actually are currently working. So what we see is the mean is actually 5.34 on a scale of seven, 1 to 7, and the mode is 6. So for this side, actually a lot of them say that uh, what makes them happy is because they choose to be happy and positive and they are grateful for everything that they have so they can have their family, their jobs coming together, they have uh, be able to spend time during the circuit breaker with their family and a lot of things like that. So they feel that it's a mind mindful act, something that they can choose to be happy. Even if there is a phase of adversity, they will choose to look on the bright side and uh, deal with it while allowing themselves to actually embrace that emotions of sadness. And what makes them less happy is because um, they feel that they can be happier in a sense. And some actually say that they will want to generate more income or have a more stable job. And for some, actually, I did interview, they're also saying that are in the transition of a new career path. So in a sense, they also want more uh, job stability and finding a, a hoping to generate more income. And for the last range, it will be the older adults range from ages 41 to 55 plus. So the mean width that we found is 5.38 and the mode is 5. So for them, what makes them happy is doing the things that they make, make them happy. And what makes them less happy is also the feeling that they can be happier, they can be a better father, they can be a better uh uh, spending time with more fam, spending time, spending more time with family, and after the circuit breaker, they can actually go out with their family. So, with more on towards the family side, that they can be happier. Now, I'll pass on to Kadat, who's talking about the frequency of happiness. Yep. So, when we ask uh, our respondents, how often do you perhaps create moments of happiness for yourself? So that's what we mean by frequency of creating happiness. And we found that most of our participants. Uh, they rated themselves at somewhere in between sometimes and often. Uh, but for rounding up purposes, we put it as sometimes. So it's not always a conscious decision that most of them uh, do when they want to ensure that every day of their lives, they have, a, they have a happier moment or happier time. And we look at what Suchi has mentioned earlier on when they evaluate their lifestyles or uh, where they are in their life uh, at this point in time. So we see like this frequency, uh, it has some correlations itself because if you are actively taking uh, steps or, or taking part in hobbies that you are interested in that will make you feel happy, uh, there's a higher chance of you saying that you're more happy where you are right now, right? So 
Then we also look at the flip side of it. What happens uh, when we talk about what are things that prevent you from being happy? So in this term, barriers to happiness. And the most common theme that central around this whole uh, barriers itself is the concept of self. And as you can see, uh, this guy right there is being troubled by four different things out there, uh, literally in field. So when we look at uh, when Nicole Weiss mentioned itself, stress itself uh, as what was brought up earlier on, Singapore being in a very fast-paced society where it's a very competitive nature, not just in school, but also at workplace, that stress to maintain a certain level of standard of living or to strive to attain that level of standard of living, it builds a lot of stress on individuals. And that also pushes down to the mentality that they have that, okay, I must do this, I must do that. It becomes a perpetuating cycle that becomes very vicious and even harmful for their own mental well-being. And this worries itself becomes a very repetitive nature of we do the work and when we look at the big picture of it this main barrier of the self is the one that is often the one who limits themselves or prevents themselves from going after what it could be helpful towards creating moments of happiness in their lives so with all this in mind, uh, I'm going to pass over the time to Lian Ling who will share with you like the suggestions on how we can improve our well-being. Thank you so much, Keda. So a few suggestions uh, for happiness that we uh, garnered from a lot of our respondents. One of them is self-exploration. So taking the time to understand yourself, to explore new things, finding things having goals, having a purpose that motivates you in life. So really seeking into different uh, fields of exploration to get to know yourself better as well. The second one is commitment, making an effort to prioritize and do the things that makes you happy. Uh, third one was also quite, um, was quite uh, major in a sense where a lot of them did mention on how it's a mindset, on how we can adjust our thinking. Uh, a few of them did mention as well that if we were truly unhappy and it was difficult to uh, come out of that unhappiness, we can seek professional help to help uh, adjust our mindset as well. And so a few things here. So some things that might be holding us back from being happy is simply just uh, focusing on the things that, uh, um, that we already have instead of the things that we don't have in that sense. And the last one is uh, looking around our environment, looking around the people, looking at the people around us to see that happiness does not have to be in the big events. It is in the tiniest things around us. So a few of them that I remembered mentioned telling me was uh, how did we notice like um, the notes on our table? Did we notice the flowers? Uh, outside of our window, do we notice the pictures of our friends and family around us? Do we notice these small things that can actually give us happiness rather than focusing on the big things? So this actually uh, concludes our findings as well. Um, and if I also may share a few more interesting responses that I really, really like. A few of them also focused on things like uh, being who you are, being authentic and genuine, and being proud of that. Having the self-confidence and self-love, as well as caring for yourself, are a few things that truly uh, would enhance our happiness level as well. Yeah, so that concludes our... <laughs> Yay, our... thank you. Give yourself a round of applause. <laughs> so, I, I really... I. Ooh, I really applaud. I really applaud our, our three young people, right, to jump onto this because I literally had no guidance for them. There was no template that they could use. They had to really use whatever their experiences are to do this ground up kind of research. Uh, and I think uh, so far, uh, if we all have have heard what they have shared, there is already some patterns that we are starting to see. And hopefully, 
the next few cohorts that come on board can continue to work on, on these uh, uh, data that they have already uh, uh, uncovered and be able to build upon it. And then we can have a more robust kind of a research and, uh, and process in terms of uh, what actually happiness means to Singaporeans. Right. So I, I have to say that it's the research so far uh, has been done only with Singaporeans. So if you are watching us from overseas or from other countries, we have not gone that far yet. Uh, but really just looking at where we are locally in our little island uh, of what, six, five million people now or six million people. I'm not so sure anymore. Uh, <laughs> so uh, the, the research will continue with the next few cohorts. And if you are keen to be a part of the research, uh, let us know, ping us, you know, on our comments or in our uh, or, or Facebook message us because I think the upcoming cohorts will also need some respondents. Uh, this cohort has actually spoken to 115, if I'm not wrong. So if each cohort is about 100 people that they could speak to uh, in the process of their, of their immersion program, then by the end of the entire SIIP, we could potentially be ha have been told uh, about what 500 over people, uh, which I think it's a, an amazing feat uh, to, to have come along so far. Right. So now that we have come to understand the data as well as the findings that our beautiful people have, have uncovered, we were going to zoom in on themselves, right? What are their own definitions of happiness? Because when we first met up in our first meeting, I actually asked them this question, right? What does happiness mean to you? And that was when the project started. And as they went through and they spoke to the different people, they might have heard different things and they might have uh, uncovered different things. So perhaps we're going to ask them to just take turns to share our uh, so before the project, that means when we started the project, what was your definition then? And perhaps where you have come to so far, has that definition changed? If it hasn't changed, it's fine. And if it has, then what might it have shifted to? So who's, who would like to go first? I can go first. Sure. So uh, at the start, when I first, uh, when Michelle first asked us this question, I think to me it was more about being more uh, contented with who I am and what I have, and also about spreading the love with others and um, spending time with my loved ones and doing things that I want to do in my life. And as I interview more people, I think the gist of what happiness means to me did not change, but rather I find myself relating to, uh, really agreeing with people who uh, mentioned how. Uh, happiness can be just a state of mind and um, if you choose to look at the more long-term time of happiness definitely in our lives we have those uh, moment to moment and short spurts of happiness and also um, long-term happiness or the things that we look back will be uh, very memorable or something that will last a long time so I think it's also balancing a balance for me of trying to balance those moments of moments to happen, like whether it is grab, grabbing an ice cream or like going on a roller coaster. In that sense, I feel like that is where I can get happier. But if also to balance with a long term of happiness, but looking at what I have and balancing with the people that I love and doing things that I enjoy where while it may, in the moment may give me other types of emotion, like maybe stress. But as I look back, it's something that I can be really... Uh, happy about about my how far I've come and doing the things that I've found a uh, purpose in life in. So in a sense, it's about a balance between these types, these different types of happiness. And also still a central theme of my happiness will be about great, gratefulness. So like my mentioned, what I have and I'm not focusing too much on what I don't have, even though there's also always uh, self, room for self-improvement and how I can be a better person. But it's also to be grateful of what I already have. Yeah, that's uh, definitely what my current view is like. Cool, thank you. Thank you for sharing, Shati. How about the rest? You want to see this paper stone? <laughs> okay, so, yeah, Ling, go first. Go first. Um, so when we started this project, uh, I shared with everyone that my definition of happiness is related to bliss and related to joy. So how I see bliss and how I see joy is, um, to me, it's not really an emotion. It's more of a state of being rather than a state of mind for me as well. So what it means to me is uh, bliss is like a connection that I feel that is beyond myself. So a connection to uh, 
to nature, a connection to animals, a connection to uh, everyone, to everything. Kind of a oneness towards uh, all that is. And, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and, and um, as well as joy. So joy is, uh, to me, things that definitely uh, is really in relation to things that makes me happy. But it's more towards it's more towards longer term happiness. So it's not short term happiness. It's uh, things like things that give me meaning. So example, like my purpose in life, example, um, discovering more about myself, uh, getting to understand people on a deeper level, having meaningful conversations, having meaningful connections, having heart to heart uh, talks, having uh, circles where we can all express our vulnerability, our true self with each other with, with in a safe space without any sort, sort of judgment around. So to me, that has uh, not changed um, in, in that sense. But I have, through this experience, I have interviewed a, quite a number of people who have very similar experiences, who, who also resonate with this on a certain level. I also met a, a few people who also saw that happiness was something that was internal as well as external and a few of them seek to define happiness in a more broader sense in their own lives uh, through discovering who they are within as well so i feel that this this has been a very interesting experience for me to discover more too yeah my bad sorry thank you uh, so, we have <laughs> Keda, Kada left to share. What does happiness mean to you? Alright, so... <laughs> for me, what you have, uh, so being in the present moment, uh, having the gratitude to own for even the tiniest things uh, in life. But it's like a deeper meaning than just being grateful. It also has the meaning of like a less painful journey uh, that is striving towards a set of ideals. And this less painful journey itself, right, it partially has to do with, with that when we look at what we mentioned earlier in the report about finding in the findings that happy is a choice, uh, most of them view that you can choose to be happy by choosing a certain perspective and mentality. So when I look at myself, right, there are times where I just don't choose to be happy. And hence like the more painful journey route. So if I were to choose happiness, like, it would have been a less painful route. And the second part about uh, a journey towards the ideals, I think as much as we can have our in Singapore, uh, ideals are just ideals. Sometimes it's not really meant for you to attain it, but it's more of a, in the process, in the journey of uh, going for it. And more importantly, it's not really the end outcome, but the whole process of it. So when I look at it, I felt like that really deepened uh, my understanding of happiness and the most striking parts into the definitions of happiness in my mind was that um, there is no, I mean, the, as the saying goes, no pain, no gain, right? Uh, you can't really get happiness if you have never experienced sadness. So I felt uh, when people mentioned that you can't be happy all the time, when I asked them, how often do you make yourself happy, right? And they say that, I just realized like, okay, yeah. You definitely need to have a balance of both. And those sharing from different people have like deeper and reached how I define happy. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you for sharing. So we actually have a comment from one of our viewers. 
and she's one of the respondents as well. <laughs> so she's very happy, <laughs> yeah, to to get to to, to you know, be a part of this project. Uh, and and she's this is her comment lah that she's very heartened to be hearing also like the different quotes from the other respondents, and be able and for the three of you to be able to relay this collective voice right, uh, and be able to inspire for positive change. Well done, guys. Thank you, right. Lai Fong. <laughs> so, um, so again, when we come back to this project and the intention of SIIP, which is the Skilio Immers uh, Industry Immersion Program, um, it is also about a process for our our dear youths like yourselves uh, to have learned something perhaps of yourself uh, through this project. And the emphasis of what uh, Skilio does is really on the soft skills aspect of things. So if I could just get you to quickly share about uh, what have you learned about yourself through this project? I think for myself, uh, what I found about myself is that I really enjoy this human to human interaction as, as I interview uh, people and strangers even because even though sometimes uh, we have to interview maybe like three or four interviews a day and it can get a bit draining at times but as when i go in, into the conversation it just feels really nice to be hearing their views and what their perception of happiness and is there sometimes it didn't really feel like an interview anymore it was just conversation so i really uh found that i really enjoyed this human to human connection even with people that i don't know don't know and also something that i've learned for myself is um I think throughout, like especially in the initial stage of the project, I tend to have a certain like bias towards a certain type of happiness, and like thinking that some happiness is the right one, or like some is so it should be what we are chasing for. But as I interview more people, and I realize that there is no uh, right happiness for everyone. Uh, there's no right happiness but there's only a right happiness for you yourself so it's for you to explore and find what is that right happiness for you and and then, so if i would like to add on because when Kida was sharing about his uh what happiness means to him i suddenly thought of uh, so many of the respondents that actually told me how um there's definitely get about to be bad days and times when you're feeling sad and that's why um we shouldn't let our emotions be the one that dictate our overall happiness. So that's why I also say um, a balance of uh, maybe, for me at least, for me it will be a balance of the moment to moment uh, happiness and also the long term type of happiness. And knowing that there are definitely to be some days where I we're feeling sad, but at the end of the day, it will be looking at the uh, what we already have in a long term happiness. Yeah. Ooh. So at the okay back to the question. Sorry, I went off. Um, no so for me, I've learned something that I really uh, learned about this project and about myself is um, I I definitely did have a bias yeah. towards to happiness, and through this project, I got to understand that different people do have different types of happiness, and whatever is right for you, and if you find yourself that is happy, then you should be uh you should it's something you should be going towards too and like i said the second point would be i really enjoy human to human interaction yeah <laughs> nice i'm gonna ask kada to speak before he freezes again <laughs> okay <laughs> uh what i've learned about myself i think i definitely have learned to appreciate uh, the little things that I've taken for granted in my own life. Uh, 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 and even things that uh, keep myself happy. Uh, firstly, before this, I'm not the kind who actively uh, go and perhaps buy a cup of ice cream or those sort of things like, like i will just and and they kept the same notion keeps popping up saying that you have to go and explore what might be things 
you could be interested in and that you could be happy about. And this is this a slap in my face saying that, okay, uh, no matter what stage in my life, I think I can do to keep myself happy or even entertained. So I learned that right now my life is pretty well, definitely uh, as a call to action for my learnings. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. You name yourself. What have you learned about yourself through this project? Okay, so thank you for sharing. Uh, so for myself, um, for myself, it's actually more about my uh, tendencies, about my old struggles that I tend to face in my own life. So for me, initially, uh, at the start of the project, I actually had a few problems with managing my time, managing my stress. I also had a few problems with, um, I, I guess I was also afraid of how I would be able to interact well and work well with my team. Because uh, I've always had this, in a way, a, a, a belief, a sort of belief that it's not possible for me to work in a group because uh, it's always been easier for me to work with people one on one. Like I, I've always had this feeling, and like conflicts and tension is bound to happen, and it's things that I don't like. So I, I was afraid of these things. I was also highly um, believing that my obstacles were impossible to overcome. So like managing my time, managing my stress, uh, how how to take it at my own pace that I do not end up hurting myself, that I do not end up going into uh, a frozen or a flight or flight mode in my nervous system. So I was guided by uh, Michelle as well as uh, the studio um, uh, platform. Like they did advise me, they did um, speak to me as well. And also my team members who were very, very understanding. So this helped me to be able to kind of see things from a different perspective. And also uh, on from having some tips and suggestions from my teammates on how they manage their own time, on how they manage their own stress. I felt that uh, this also gave me more time to really adjust myself and pace myself at a, a, a certain, um, certain, how do I call it, C certain uh, level or pace <laughs> where I am more comfortable, um, where it does not end up hurting my own system as well as uh, mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually. So for me, it, I, I really needed that. And I felt that I did have that with this team. I did have the support and I did, uh, Michelle also did advise me on certain ways that I can help myself as well. So to me, the, the biggest thing that I have learned is most probably that I have had this breakthrough where I learned that I could prioritize my needs and at the same time, I can still manage my time and I can still do what I'm supposed to be doing. And at the same time, I can also ask for help. I can also share my struggles with the team. So it's something that I still need to do every day of my life uh, to manage my time, to see what is important, to see uh, what I'm supposed to be doing. So this is something that I'm still learning in the process of because I feel for many years of my life, uh, this structure or this um, sort of pace has been removed because I was just, uh, I was doing ad hoc jobs here and there. I, my, my studying times were always in the, in the night. So in the day, there was no structure. There was nothing I needed to go with. And I had, I had a tendency to quit when I, when I face adversities, when I face struggles, when I face obstacles. And I think that's impossible to overcome. So I do have this tendency. And for me to have come to this point, I felt uh, it's something that I am very proud of myself because I did not know that I, was, I would be able to manage my time better. I didn't know I would be able to interview uh, three people a day, four people a day. 
um, back to back. I didn't know I would be able to um, to to speak with people so much to the point that it drains me. And at the same time, I was able to pick myself back up and then pace that so that I was still interviewing people, but I was just taking care of myself so that it was a simultaneous um, way of still doing my, my part, but at the same time, I was still taking care of myself. So this was something that I always thought was kind of impossible to do. And this experience itself, this project itself has taught me a lot about myself and a lot about how I could continue to interact with people continue to interact with teammates, continue to um, work with the things that I do have instead of resisting or, in a sense, rejecting everything and giving up easily. So this is something I have learned for myself. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Right, so to end off this live session uh, is what is one of your takeaways in terms of soft skills or human skills right, from this project? So it can be one word, it can be one phrase. Let's not have it one paragraph, can? <laughs> so what, what is one of the takeaways in terms of soft skills uh, or what we call human skills uh, from this project that you have gone through? And then we'll say goodbye to everyone. Can it be one sentence? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Your one sentence got how many words? Okay, so... <laughs> I think for me, it will be... Um, establishing a connection with strangers how yeah okay yeah, thank you <laughs> <laughs> i tried to leave it to a phrase <laughs> good job <laughs> who would like to go next am i i'm gonna go next if i'm not lagging am i lagging uh, you are a bit my kids okay. four words virtual rapport building skills. <laughs> wow. okay. Virtual rapport building skills, okay. Who? Cool. Oh, so for me is uh, most probably listening skills. So being open to hear everything a lot more, as well as uh the support of uh humans. Like I I actually shared my struggles uh, with my interviewees as well. And it's very funny that they actually ended up supporting me also and like cheering me on. So this is something that I did not expect. Yeah. Cool. Thank you very much. So thank you for our three lovely uh, interns. I don't want to call you, you know, students in the immersion program. It's like so long to talk about. <laughs> like what to call you guys collectively. Um, but I think for me, I'm really very, very heartened uh, by the work that and the work and the diligence that they've put into this project. I think uh, it has been a roller coaster, right? If I might say. So it was a very interesting four weeks uh, where we started in the first week. There was that that discomfort or a little bit of like, oh, I don't know how this person's gonna work and stuff like that. And then only in the second week did they actually kind of like did some team building or some team bonding thing. And that's where actually from there on, a lot of things went a lot more smoother and uh, the momentum started to pick up as well in terms of uh, just getting the work done because they, they built that rapport. And then I think this week itself was also another, another challenge point because this week is where they actually take the data and they analyze the data and have to put it together into what we saw on the PowerPoint slides as well as a report. And it, I, I think the entire experience has been amazing for me to just watch how they have come together as individuals and now as a team and also then to come up with all the interesting findings and the sharing that they have. I think what really heartens me the most is the development and growth that each of them have gone through, even though it's a very short four weeks kind of program. I, there would have been a lot more that we can do if it was a three month kind of immersion program, which is what initially the overseas thing was meant to do. Uh, but I think in this four weeks, a lot of things has been accelerated and I think compounded with uh, the fact that actually we didn't meet physically at all. Everything was done virtual. Everything was done through online meeting. Uh, the, the hard truths of online meetings was also discovered along the way where this wonderful team had four hour meetings, <laughs> like in a stretch. I don't know how they survived it, but but I think this is a good lesson for them as they go out into the industry eventually to say that 
no, never ever again have a four hour meeting, <laughs> right? At most, maybe a one and a half to two hours and then find a way to break it down such that it's, it serves them, right? So that, that's one of the biggest learnings that I've heard from them uh, so far. So thank you everyone who has been a part of this session today and uh, journeyed with us in today's session. Uh, internet has been a bit glitchy the entire morning, which is why we had people freezing and, and, and then coming back and then disappearing and stuff like that. So thank you for being patient. Uh, that happens with technology as well. Uh, and also uh, thank you for, I think there are quite a number of us who are watching uh, also respondents on this project. So thank you very much for your participation because all your voices are important as a part of this research and moving forward uh, in the work that we hope to be able to uncover. Right, so someone says, good work, guys, and gives you three claps. <laughs> <laughs> right, and, and, and uh, with that, we're going to end today's session. It is not the end of the project, though. Uh, starting next week, we have two more cohorts coming on board, which means there's two teams actually running this project uh, uh, to add on and to compound on what this lovely team has done. Uh, and hopefully by the end of three months, so by the end of July, we will have more information and more uh, stuff that will be coming on board. And perhaps, you know, what we hear today will be enhanced, will become more robust, and uh, that all this work done is not, is not gone to waste, right? It's going to be really helpful and useful for all of us to uh, learn. Uh, I think there will be quite a number of psychology students who will be on board this project as well. Kit, uh, Kada himself is a psychology student. And I think one of the things that Kada was sharing was he's also part of a project team that's working on the is it the curriculum for the MOE syllabus or something like that? Yeah, Challenge. on mental health. Yeah, on mental health and uh, mental well-being for our youths. So hopefully this uh, project will also be helpful and meaningful to support uh, this moving forward. Uh, you have a lot of friends on who have been listening to you guys. So another person says, good job. <laughs> and one more person says, great work done. So well done, guys. And thank you very much for viewing. Thank you very much for spending your time with us this morning. We're going to end this live now and we'll see you when we have new respondents and new data to add on to the current data. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.